Hi everybody, it's June 24th. This is tour number two for the season, coming in here and checking out the garden. And I wanted to spend some time just pointing out special things of interest this week as we walk through here. Overall, the tomatoes are doing fantastic. We've already harvested some really nice big slicers. More are coming on pretty much every day at this point. Of course, the cherry tomatoes have been producing and we've been picking for a long time. There's the eggplant flowering and starting to fruit which is always fun. And I showed you this uh, winter squash trellis last time. And it's growing so fast now that certainly it's changed, but the vines are coming up over the top or will be very soon. They're growing maybe about a foot a day in some cases. Larry's making his cameo. Hey buddy. <laughs> we'll keep walking here. Borge continues to feed the pollinators. It's always a good sign. Uh, I mentioned keeping water in the garden every day for a lot of reasons. Right now here in Atlanta, we've had just super dry, super hot conditions for a long time. So we're in desperate need of water. So clearly the wildlife is looking for it, but at the same time as they're coming in looking for moisture, many times they'll go to your fruit and they'll start picking into it just to get some moisture more so than to try to eat it. Now that I don't think is pecking. I think that's just physiological, but uh, that's kind of what it looks like if you get a bird or something pecking at it, maybe it's a critter. But if you have water, hopefully that's what they go to instead, if they find it. All right, so let's talk about a couple specifics as I come across these. Um, if you're growing indeterminate tomatoes, obviously those are vining and they'll continue to grow until frost kills it back if you let them. And if you have cages like I do, those vines, some of those will escape the cage and you either need to cut them back or just let them kink over and that cuts down on their production. I like to use this wire, this rubber coated wire. I've talked about this before. It's in my Amazon shop at joegardener.com slash Amazon under the, uh, I think the must have section. I'll try to link to that also in the captions, but it makes a big difference because it rains them in. It's easy to work with. You can do all of that with one hand and um, it's super soft, so there's no damage at all to the vine, but it's a really nice way to bring it all back in so that it's not flopping over everything. It protects the vines and it keeps the fruit productive. So I have those all through the garden and you rarely see them because they kind of blend in to everything else. All right, so I'm spending a lot of time with diseases and that is always the case. I have not done any fertilization, no, um, pesticide, no herbicide, no fungicide, but um, my method of control there is just trying to keep everything sanitary and proactively take it out as I see it. And I spend about less than 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes a day, just checking out the 24 plants and cutting out the damage. So what you see right there are my tub trugs, almost full since Friday. So that would be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and today of diseased foliage that I've cut out. And I use Red tub trugs, I have a lot of tub trugs, I love these, and I use the red ones just to remind me visually that, you know, to me red is caution or whatever. So I always use my disease foliage for the red ones and I never put anything else in those and I never put my disease foliage into the non-red tub trugs. And so that may just be a little bit of information for you to keep things orderly. Cherry tomatoes are going nuts, of course, and um, it's been a lot of fun to grow different varieties that rival Sun gold, those are sun gold right there, but it's also the plant that I find is most susceptible in my garden to yellowing foliage, mostly early blight, uh, and so I'm always cutting it out. But here's what this uh, rubber coated wire looks like that I mentioned a minute ago, and it comes in rolls. It's very, very soft. I can squeeze that and it's got some nice give to it. So it's cushiony, and um, there it is right there, and I'm using it all over the place. I showed you my carrots that, gone, that have gone to flower. And uh, again, it's still early, but you should see these flowers in another 30 minutes or so. The ac insect activity is crazy. Okay, this way. This is another bed of peas. We're picking peas every night and it's amazing. And they're so good still. And it's hard to believe they're this productive this late in the season, coming up almost into July at this point, but I'm not complaining. This is the other winter squash bed. 
and I'll share something else with you. Um, these Velcro ties, let me find some right here. They, you buy them by the roll. I think it's about $4 a roll and they last forever, but I use them all the time to train growth and it works really good with vining crops like this winter squash. So if I want to just guide these guys and let them know the direction I want them to go, I'll set them up with this soft, on the inside of this, it's got a softer coating uh, or fabric, and then it just easily sticks together. And then the tendrils, of course, grab on, and then you can do what you want. But that's how I uh, manage how they're growing on the trellis. Of course, flowers and pollination happening right there, which is really cool. But I want to show you kind of the dirty side of what's unavoidable in many cases. And I've gotten emails and messages from people wondering what's going on with their tomato plants that just are wilting. They're not yellowing, they're just wilting. They look awful. And so prior to it looking this bad, and this is bacterial wilt, uh, they just start getting gray and limp and droopy. And like I said, there's no sign of pest because it's not a pest, not, a, not an insect pest. And um, they wonder what's happened. So bio, uh, bacterial wilt is a fungal borne pathogen that is in your soil and uh, you can't really do anything about it. Once you have it, what's happening is the fungi are filling the the pore space that is what allows water and nutrients to transfer and it cuts that off because it fills up with bacteria and it clogs it and it prevents that transfer of water and nutrients and this is what you ultimately get. So you can't fix this and I'm going to be taking this out. Uh, ironically or not actually, uh, the plants next to it are totally fine and that's because the pathogens that got to this plant are localized in that area and they really haven't found a way into the, an opening and the roots of this plant, which would be through uh, maybe possible damage or just some sort of natural opening. And that's how a bacteria gets in. It has to get in to create the infection. So I'll take this out uh, because unfortunately, I don't think these tomatoes are going to have enough time to ripen before they just lose their momentum. So that's the reality of what I'm dealing with. And you can see uh, the removal of foliage on some of these main stems. And that's what I do to keep the rest of the plant looking good and slow down the spread of disease because that's really your end game here at this point. But I'm not complaining. The plants are still very healthy and I haven't done any supplemental fertilization, uh, no fungicide, no pesticide ever. And I'm very happy in spite of the fact that it's been very hot lately. It's been in the mid 90s and we haven't had any rain so uh, I'll go through here and hand water a couple times a week. But because the soil's so good, I focus on compost additions twice a year, about two inches. And then of course I mulch with uh, semi-composted shredded leaves. That helps hold the moisture in. And my soil now is to the point that it is very good with the drainage, but it also holds a lot of moisture. And that's the end game. That's what you're hoping for. And when you have that kind of soil, you don't have to be out here all the time worrying about whether or not you're getting enough water to the plants, even when you're not getting rain. So I think that's all I have to talk specifically to you about today. And um, the next one we'll, we'll do in a few days to a week, depending on my schedule. But certainly there will be more and I will keep you posted on the changes as they happen. Hope you have a good week.